British astronaut Tim Peake has announced that he will be going back into space for a second time. Delighted to say he joins us now from Stevenage. Tim Peake, good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, it's in the gift, isn't it, of the European Space Agency, this. They will decide when. Uh, but you'll go back, what, on a Soyuz, as you did last time? How will it work? Well, yes, the announcement was made this morning really for my whole class of 2009 that the extension of the International Space Station program to 2024 will enable all of us to have the opportunity for a second mission back to the space station. Uh, the timings of that mission is yet to be determined by the European Space Agency. OK. We saw you this morning at the Science Museum uh, pouring over the Soyuz capsule that you went up in and came back to the Kazakh step on, still singed from some of the re-entry temperatures, which must have been absolutely colossal. Um, what comes across more than anything when you look back at those pictures of you going up, giving that wonderful thumbs up, uh, perfect illustration of British pluck, is the sense of claustrophobia. Mm -hmm. it, are we right in taking that away from the, the sense of what it was like? Did you feel terribly claustrophobic? Yeah, absolutely. It's something that a lot of people commented to me about this morning when they saw the capsule was how small it looks. And it is. Uh, I mean, really, that's uh, part of the design is, is when you're bringing something back through the Earth's atmosphere, the smaller it is, the easier it is to engineer. So it's a small capsule. It's a very tight space. And in fact, when it's packed up with the cargo that we bring back from the space station, it's even smaller inside. So uh, anybody who suffered from claustrophobia certainly wouldn't do very well inside the Soyuz. I remember listening to an interview. I think it was with the late John Glenn. Uh, talking about coming back and there was a, a flashing warning light indicating that perhaps the heat shield was loose and he said he became super sensitive to any warming in the rear quarters. Uh, <laughs> did you? <laughs> <laughs> As, it's something actually I was very surprised at. I mean, it sounds strange. You know, you, you know that you're going to experience very hot temperatures when you come back through the Earth's atmosphere. And the capsule, it has to withstand 1,600 degrees Celsius. But inside the capsule, of course, it's very, very hot. And um, all three of us were absolutely drenched in sweat when we were dragged out of, uh, of the, the capsule. That's what you drenched in sweat. You, you couldn't really walk as well. Gosh, the whole, the whole weight and the experience really took its toll on you. But do you have any idea when you're going to be going back and what are you going to be doing? Because the last time you carried out around 200, 250 experiments and you also kept yourself entertained quite a bit. Do you have any idea what you're going to be doing going heading back to space the second time? Well, the space station program, the great thing about that is that the science is, is a rolling evolution and the experiments continue to go up there. Uh, what's really exciting is, is since I've landed, in fact, we've started DNA sequencing on board the space station. We're studying more genetics, more pharmaceutical companies are, are being involved in the medical research that we're doing. So the science program just continues to evolve. And the astronauts really, whenever they go to the space station, they slot in to that, to that science program and you'll be trained up on those experiments nearer the time. So that's the job of any astronaut is to be able to perform those scientific experiments and also maintain the space station, which may require, for example, a spacewalk or using the robotic arm for resupply vehicles. Uh, Tim, my, my children are all enormous fans of yours, partly because you're the first Britain to walk in space, but also because we live quite close to Middle Wallop, uh, the uh, Army Air Corps, where you used to fly uh, from in your well, Army Air Corps days, I suppose. Uh, how do you put a metric, how do you measure that sense of inspiration. I mean, quite clearly, you know, for many people, not least my children, you're a household name, but what, what's the degree? How can you demonstrate how you have inspired a generation of young people who perhaps might not have been as interested in science and space as they have been because of you? I think one of the most uh, wonderful things for me personally since landing has been going on the post-flight tour, having the opportunity to visit schools, universities and have school conferences as well and to really see the impact that Mission Principia made. I know that during the mission we reached out to over a million school students uh, and even more since then and these educational programs are continuing to run which is incredible. That's, the, that's one of the great things about it and I'm stood here at the moment at uh, Airbus in Stevenage in the Mars Yard where today we're opening uh, STEM centre called Discovery Space and, and this is an example of how space is continuing to inspire our younger generation to get involved in science and engineering and technology and that's going to be important not only because there are a genuinely rewarding and exciting careers to have in that area but also we have a skill shortage that we need to address in the UK so trying to encourage students at, at a younger age to get involved in STEM subjects is very important and I'm just delighted that Principia was able to do that. 
And what was recovery like when you when you landed back on Earth and your body recovering to the toll, um, being in space for six months took on you, your mind, your body. What was that like for you? And how, how excited are you to, to spend more time in space? Well, you're right. I mean, it does take a huge toll on your body being in space for six months. But that's one of the remarkable things. One of the things that we study is not just how quickly the body adapts to living in space, but how quickly the body adapts to coming back into a gravity environment. And it only took about three weeks before I felt actually very comfortable. My balance had retained, regained uh, normality. I felt strong. I felt fit enough. I was running. Um, but it actually t t it took uh, about six months before my muscles and my bone density really made a, a decent recovery um, and of course every astronaut accepts that when you go into space you're going to put your body through this punishing regime but uh, that's uh, that's something that we all we all sign up to and, and actually the rewards of space flight in terms of uh, the, the science that we're involved in in terms of view of planet earth and the inspirational factor that we can have far outweigh the negative negative sides. Uh, Tim sad to say we've only got time for one more question I know we ought to editorially ask you about why it is you're on a Martian landscape in Stevenage but I'm going to ignore that question because I'm I'm really keen <laughs> to ask you instead and uh, we I was on presenting a year ago when you when you had the launch and I remember thinking as everybody else must have thought vicariously as you gave that thumbs up in the capsule you know I think the phrase we used at the time was that you were on a it was like going to space on a, on a gigantic firework that at any moment could do something unpredictable how did you keep yourself calm do you know that the training is the one thing that enables us to keep calm in those situations? We had done that launch sequence uh, hundreds of times in the simulators in Star City in Russia, um, covering any eventuality that could have possibly happened. Oh, come on, and it's, it's not the same as being really... there, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the one thing the simulator can't give you, of course, the simulator can't give you the, the sounds and the, and the smells and the acceleration and everything. So, so that's very different inside the capsule. Um, but other than that, it's, your training is, is what really keeps you calm because you're, you're empowered with the knowledge that if something goes wrong, at least you know what to do. You've got options. And the Soyuz spacecraft is, is a great vehicle to go into space in because it does have, you do have options at every stage during the launch sequence if something goes wrong. Well... He's an all-round British hero, absolutely imperturbable. He's on thousands of media interviews, I'm sure, but he still Indeed. makes them feel as fresh as a daisy. Tim Peake, thanks ever so much, and good really luck Really good again. talking to you, really good. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. <laughs>